But what I said earlier, before you all arrived, was that things are a lot different today than they were on November the 19th, 1863. At that time, as I arrived at the cemetery, the work was not completed. There were stacks of coffins which still waited to be buried. And not only that, in the distance you could see skeletons of horses which were still laying out there because the men had to be taken care of before the horses could be disposed of. As I approach the speaker stand, there are soldiers that are standing shoulder to shoulder with arms in ready position. I do not, I, I just don't like that, but I have, my life has been threatened and more so since I signed the Emancipation Proclamation at the beginning of this year. And I yield to their wishes for the protection that they feel that I need. I take my seat on that platform and as I look out over this battlefield where about four months ago, men were fighting and now thousands lay silent in this newly created cemetery. I feel my heart will break. Mr. Everett, who has been selected to give the main address, he delivers that address, all two hours of it, an eloquent speech without notes of any kind. Then I hear the applause that, that signals the close of his speech and I feel a heavy sense of awe and re responsibility and inadequacy because these few words that I have to say can in no way honor these men or thank this nation or their families enough for the sacrifices that have been made. I approach the center of the podium and deliver the short 10 sentences or so that I have prepared. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we're engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. And we have come here to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place to those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate and we cannot consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it cannot forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is for us rather to be dedicated here to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth.